Hey guys, Greg here from Premier Fitness Systems. I've got five great exercises today to work on hip mobility as it relates to performance for golf. All right guys, so this first drill I'm gonna have you guys work on today is some variations of a deep squat. So for a lot of people, just getting in this position is challenging, but starting to become aware of what's going on the feet, the hips, the pelvis, and start to kind of challenge your body more and more. This is a great drill I like to start with a lot of times it's part of my warm up just to kind of get things flowing and then as I get warmed up, kind of get more and more into it. So we're gonna start on this drill, plank position. I wanna make sure I kind of tuck the pelvis so my glutes are active, my pelvis is neutral, and then I'm gonna step into a deep squat. I want my toes kind of coming out on here and I'm just kind of sitting into my heels, kind of moving out tuck that pelvis, just starting to sit into the hips. Now one of the things on this drill a lot of times people tend to do is come all the way down and basically I'm just kind of passively sitting in the joint. I want to get active here so that my nervous system starts to connect with my muscles and I get more out of this. So a good way to do that is, you know, if down here is passive to get active, I want to think about like a frog, I want to bring my butt up a little bit and just tuck my pelvis so it's engaged, driving my knees out to the wall, and then think good posture, so a double chin. Think about kind of dialing my hands so I've got some tension kind of pushing into the floor. I should feel everything from head to toe nice and active. And then coming back to a neutral position. As I get warmed up on this, I can add a few different things. One, I can kind of add a hop, getting into that active position. Or a second thing I can do is go into a hop, get that tension. I can start to pick the hands up and kind of get some movement in those hips. But this is a great drill that I like to use beginning of a workout, start to kind of get everything, feet, ankles, hips, everything kind of firing. And then from there, start to think, you know, maybe five or 10 of these, start to get some good movement as you're going through this, kind of move on to the next drill. All right guys, so this next drill, we're gonna do some 90-90 heel taps. So a lot of times I see people get in these 90-90 drills, they lack good enough hip mobility to really do it well. So this is kind of a good alternative for people to start to get better mobility before they get into harder 90-90 drills. So you're gonna start off on this. I want me at 90 degrees. I want to imagine there's a scale, so I'm pushing evenly through the scale from my ankle to my knee all the way through. I want to make sure toes are flexed, and goal on here is I want my knee to be all the way flush with the floor. That's something I can't do. I can use a mat or a block, something to kind of close that space. The next thing I want to do is I want to kind of match up my knee kind of with my heel, bringing this back foot back on here. So I'm going to start in a position where Imagine I've got like a steering wheel, kind of angry. I've got towels kind of wrapped under my arms so I have some tension. And then what I want to do is I want to drive through the scale, tension in the steering wheel, and then I want to start to open up the hip. I'm gonna come back down, continuing to keep that tension in the steering wheel. I want to make sure driving that leg into the floor. And then I want to start to open up through this leg. A few things on this leg, when I do open up, I can play with where my foot is to start to change how it affects my hip. The other thing is when I come up and I get to full range on here, I want to imagine my foot is kind of trying to drive back to me, but it's not actually moving. What that's gonna do is give me some more hamstring engagement, get that hip to fire a little bit more, and then when I've got that tension, I wanna take that steering wheel and almost bring my weight a little bit forward so I get deeper into that hip stretch. So I'm gonna kind of drive down, I'm up, kind of pull them back, push that knee down, this knee out, pull myself through the middle, and then coming up nice and tall. So this is a great one, doing sets of maybe eight, 10 a side, and then kind of work your way to the other side. All right guys, so next drill, we're gonna do some good old FRC. It's called Pales Rails. So what we're doing is kind of using both sides of the muscle to start to get that joint to help open up. So what I'm gonna have you guys do on here is gonna find a wall, and once you get all the way up against the wall, and we're gonna bring our 
legs out kind of as wide as we can. Biggest thing I'm making sure is I don't want you guys in extension. So I want to think about kind of tuck that pelvis so it's neutral. And then you kind of want to walk those legs down. You shouldn't be pushing into this stretch, but come out as far as you can. Kind of let gravity start to work into this. So we're going to stay here for about a minute, basically letting the nervous system kind of adjust, letting gravity start to stretch out the muscles. And then what we're going to do on here is thinking about good posture. So I want to think neutral, kind of double chin. I want to think about taking my upper body. I want to pull it into the floor. So I've got good tension throughout the entire body. And then I want to think about keeping my pelvis in a neutral position. I want to drive my heels through the wall. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push into the wall for 20 seconds as hard as I can. I want to start the tension about 20% and ramp it up. Go about 100% driving through the wall, finish at 20 seconds, and then keeping my pelvis neutral. Now instead of pushing into the wall, I'm going to drive off the wall kind of as far as I can. So I want to think about driving my heels long, coming off that wall as far as I can for 20 seconds. At the end of the 20, I'm going to bring my feet down, keep my pelvis neutral, and kind of walk my feet down again. Basically taking some deep breaths, waiting about 30 seconds, and then I'm going to repeat the process, either two or three more rounds on here. So same thing, I'm going to bring the pelvis to neutral, high tension in the upper body, I'm going to drive the heels into the wall for 20, I'm going to come off the wall for 20, and then keep my pelvis neutral, I'm going to walk back down into the stretch a little bit deeper, kind of work on some deep breaths for about 30 seconds kind of roll through but this is a great drill kind of start to really work on using gravity and especially for people that are really tight gravity using the wall will really help to stretch you out all right guys so this is one of my favorite hip mobility drills stole this one from capoeira so it's not something you know we created but this is a great drill kind of once you've warmed up somewhat to really start to get more into the hips I think a lot of times guys have a hard time kind of on like a caustic squat getting all the way down to the floor. The mobility from about here to here is really hard to work on. So this is a great drill to kind of start to work that end range on here. So I'm going to have you kind of start in like a tabletop, basically a beast position on here. What I want to think about on here is really trying to connect with the floor. So my hands were roots, I kind of want to push through the floor, kind of try to connect. Give some tension to the ground. I'm going to go side to side on here. So I want to think about whatever leg I'm gonna rotate into. I wanna push that leg as straight as I can. Driving kind of the heel to the floor, but it's not touching. And then I wanna bring this heel up to the floor as high as I can. And I want to sweep down on it. So a lot of times what happens, people aren't that mobile. When they come down, their foot's here. You're not really stretching the hip that well. So my foot should be out as wide as I can. A few things I want to do. A lot of guys land here, they're in extension. So I want to tuck the pelvis so it's neutral. I want to think about creating traction from this hip through the knee. So I'm going to drive this knee out while keeping neutral. And then I want to drive my toe long, like I'm just trying to touch across the wall. And I create this stretch all the way across the hips on here. Um, this is one where you can kind of start to bounce into those hips. You can also kind of early in the workout start to do two or three ankle circles, kind of bring that in. But it's a great way to kind of start to get everything. Once you get a little warmed up, take it a little bit deeper. So I'm going to come back to neutral. And then I'm going to come right into that other side. So it's tuck the pelvis, traction through the knee, good stretch. The other thing on this one is I want to make sure my shoulder's not dumping into the front of the cup. So I want good neutral shoulder, some depression, coming back to neutral, and then moving on here. And as you guys start to get better at this drill, you can start to get a little more dynamic with it. But here's a great drill I like to do. Sets of 10. You know, five to side, going side to side, maybe the first one or two on each side. Go a little bit slow, holding for four or five count, and then get.
get into a little bit of flow of it, get more dynamic, but great drill for the hips. All right, guys, so this last one in the series, this is a great one once you get everything really warmed up to kind of really target some good separation as well as getting into the hips. So this is kind of a variation of a pigeon stretch on a box. For someone whose hip mobility isn't that good and they can't even get their foot on there, you guys can kind of start with the foot off the box. It's kind of an easy way to start to progress into this drill. For those of you guys that come here, you know, a lot of times people are ask, you know, does my ankle, my knee need to be parallel to my body on the box? No. Biggest thing is not feeling any knee pain. So same thing on this one. I want to think about my knee and my ankle almost like it's driving through a scale. So I'm pushing down into the box. Next thing I want to make sure on here is in my back leg. A lot of times people start this stretch, they're already in an extended period extended posture and then they're starting to do this drill which as you guys know you don't want to be an extension in that golf swing either so first thing I want to do is on that back leg my back knee should be bent and I want to tuck my butt so that I get my pelvis neutral on here I don't want to be in that extended position so good neutral position then I want to imagine I'm creating some tension through the box so hands or shoulder distance, almost like I'm going to do a push-up. I want to push through the box and almost imagine I'm trying to kind of pull the box apart from the midline. What this does is create some full body tension, which is going to allow me to get some good stretch here. Then what I want to do is not losing the bend in the back knee, keeping that back glute neutral. I want to keep my head in a good neutral position. I'm going to come as long as I can. You feel a good stretch here at a, in the piriformis. Then I want to come up to neutral. I want to make sure I don't go into extension again, so I'm going to bring those ribs neutral, pelvis is neutral. Then I want to imagine my hands are sitting on this imaginary scale. Keeping both hands on the scale, I want to open up, stay nice and tall, ribs stay neutral, pelvis neutral, come back out, and then I'm going to come back down to the box. So I'm coming long on there. Good stretch, coming up. I want to think about my hands trying to come across the room, other hands trying to hit the wall behind me. Then I want to stay nice and tall in my posture. So some good spine alignment on there. Keeping that glute neutral and then coming back down. But on this one, I would say, you know, seven reps aside, switch sides. This is a good way to end, kind of some good hip mobility, kind of put it all together and then kind of work on that separation between that upper and lower body.